a national panorama prior to the era of categories of band. In the days when all bands, big or small, would have entered on the same stage. That would have been in 1975. One of the things that happened then is that Hatters would have been the largest band at that point to ever reach on a panorama stage. So much so that the following year, 1976, many bands came very large. And as a result of that, Pantin Bibu, in their wisdom, decided in 1977 that there would have been a limit to the amount of players allowed in a panorama band. In the area of mass, the days have gone by, although some still <clears throat> and for those of us who don't know, it was in 1956. I was a very, very little boy, but I remember it because my one of my elder brothers would have played mass in Hatters. And at that time, Hatters played the United Nations and won the Band of the Year title in San Fernando. However, in 19, that continued and it didn't win again until in 1969, well, I was old enough to be a master in the band at that time, when others played heroic Spain and also won Band of the Year in San Fernando. Following Hatter's victory, in 1975, one of the prizes would have been a tour to a foreign country. And again, others would have been the first band to have gone foreign and returned to Trinidad with the full complement. Everybody came back home. And it was well recognized because later, following that, at some point, Dr. Eric Williams, our first prime minister, in one of his speeches, did mention it. Today is another first. As we launch our 2020 Panorama, it is going to be the first time in the history of Panorama where we will have a father and son together arranging a Panorama tune for Stephen. That will be Joel <laughs> Brooks Senior, who would have been with us for many years and did very well with others. And Earl Brooks Jr., who everybody knew as BJ. So together, they will do the work, put the music together for Hatter's Steve Orchestra. So we do look forward to a good year. And with their leadership, musical directorship, we will do well. I thank you. Yes. The only thing that I forgot was, sorry, um, Atlas was also the winner of the pan in the 21st century in 2000, mm -hmm. which was the beginning of the competition. Yes, yeah. And we won with an arrangement of Young Love by Earl Brooks Sr. Wow, <laughs> small man. You <laughs> can have a part solo by Mr. Herbert Senior.
given unto me. Anyway, that one was one of my own competition. What's the title? Zook. 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 Zook.
Gabriel asks this lady Hansen, the secretary of the Hatton board, to give you a, 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 a little idea as to who really is the books.
he says he can't come and play after his father did <laughs> such a good job. So we will, he will ask to skip this this time. So what we will do at this point to the audience here, we will play Atta's Panama tune for 2020. So everybody will get a chance to listen.
was introduced to the steel pan in 1992 at age three. He then went on to play his first gig in the opening ceremony of the Brian Lauer Promenade in downtown Border Spain, Trinidad West Indies. By age five, he was already performing at several functions and competitions, including Panoramagé and numerous performances at the president's residence. He played in his first panorama at age six with Hatter's Steel Orchestra. It is noteworthy that he's now returning to the same Hatter Steel Orchestra where he started, where, where he started as a band's arranger for his first senior panorama in Trinidad and Tobago. Earl has performed and accompanied well-established musicians such as, such as his father, Earl Brooks, Len Boxy Sharp, Eddie Cole, Arturo Tappin, Mangal Patissa, Cheryl Pepsi Riley, Frankie McIntosh, to name a few. In his early childhood, Earl was a member of the music makers under the direction of Mrs. Merle Albino de Cotto. In March of, 20, of 2003, Earl became a stage member of the Exodus Steel Orchestra and was blessed to make numerous tours with the band. In 2005, for six weeks, they toured Japan, performing 35 concerts in 30 different cities. Then, in 2006, they spent three weeks touring Europe. Earl was, was the reigning champion in the improvisation category of the biennial Trinidad and Tobago Music Festival in 2008 and 2009. He became a resident of the United States later that year after returning home from a three-week tour of France with a group of five musicians, including his father. In 2009, Earl was chosen to arrange for St. Augustine Senior Comprehensive School, competing in the school panorama. The piece was entitled Riverline and earned them second place in the competition. In 2016, he also arranged for Exodus Youth Steel Orchestra, doing a wonderful rendition of Ricardo Drew's Vagabond. Earl was also a part of the promotional and marketing team for the percussive harmonic instrument that was designed and developed at the Steel Pine Development Center, the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus. Earl has been featured in a few projects throughout the years, such as Steel Love, produced and recorded by Yoichi Watanabe. Yes, yeah. Yoichi Watanabe. Four tracks on Pella Goddard's album entitled Agra Jazz. His first recording was at the age of eight, playing on his father's CD entitled Twin Towers. Most recently, Earl was a part of the debut album of the Merry Makers group called Embrace. Embrace It, and a featured soloist of ATM Charles, Black Echo 5, Steve. Earl just recently came from a two week stint in Senegal, West Africa. In the summer of 2010, he enrolled into Berkeley College of Music in Boston, Massachusetts. And in 2014, he was the headline artist alongside Arturo Tapin at Barbados Pan Fusion, held at the residence of the Prime Minister. Since then, he's been doing gigs within the United States with bands and people like Cheryl Pepsi Riley, Joss and the Jantones, the Merry Makers, the Merry Rockers, sorry, as well as solo performances at places like Blue Note Jazz, New Blue Classic. Brooklyn Bowl and Groove NYC. In January of 2018, Earl became an instructor at the Brooklyn Center for the Arts in Brooklyn, New York, using his own curriculum and assisting to develop theirs. Earl is currently in the works of publishing his first album to be released in the fall of 2020 
and hope to one day become a world-renowned entrepreneur, philanthropist, and educator in the music business, and go on to become Dr. Brooks. <laughs>